how to decide number of threads in a thread pool or what is the ideal thread pool size is very important question in multi threading even for the experienced java developers for some interviewers this is a deciding question because with this you can get to know if candidate has hands on experience in designing multi threaded applications so let's get started so concurrency is ability to run parallel programs or tasks by sharing cpu slice we know that cpu is the most important resource in computing world and we want to achieve more throughput and less latency in our programs which can be achieved with 100% cpu utilization which is the ideal scenario so how do you decide your application needs concurrency or not so let's say a user wants to search for a flight fare and availability directly by calling rest api of an airline okay similar thing but we do uh, in make my trip or go ibibo so we have let's consider we have a cpu with one core and only one task t1 needs to be executed okay so since this uh, task is dependent on outside system hence the thread will be blocked for some time till it gets response from the rest api so let's say that uh, this is the time in which it is doing some cpu operation and this is the blocking time okay and cpu is idle in this time here again uh, it gets a response and uh, it is doing some cpu processing so with this type of application we need multi threaded to be implemented because this yellow portion is still idle we are we are not achieving 100% utilization of the cpu okay now coming to the interview question what is the idle thread pool size i think for the less experienced developers if you say directly that it should be equal to the number of cores available it will be fine but for experienced developers you should exp explain and elaborate more about what are the other factors you know which should be considered while choosing the thread pool size okay and it completely depends on your requirement so you need to keep two two things in mind first one is number of cpu cores and second is type of task either it is a cpu intensive task or it is io intensive task first thing is cpu cores number of cores in cpu is directly related to number of threads you can have in your application just keep that in mind so the minimum threads minimum number of threads in your application should be equal to number of available cores uh, in your uh, machine so how do you get number of cores from your machine you just need to call get runtime dot get available processor so this will return you number of available uh, cores and you can choose that as a thread pool size in your executor service for intel core i7 9700 it has 8 cores and 8 threads so you can choose uh, your thread pool size as 8 threads if there are no other application running on your system if there is no other executor service or thread pool running in your java program Uh, next is uh, aws ec2 instances so you can directly see that you know number of cpu is available uh, for the different c5 which is compute optimized instances so for example if you if you choose uh, 18x large then you can have you know 72 uh, threads in your uh, application so next type of application is uh, io intensive application uh, example of io intensive application uh, would be db calls Uh, web services calls file operations for example you want to search some text in uh, one folder which contain 1000 files uh, web services maybe you know uh, microservices calls uh, in your application db calls you need to deal on a daily basis you need to fetch some data for the users uh, let's say that uh, you, you have implemented a get request to fetch employee details in spring boot for this you have to hit database right so your thread will be blocked till the time your query returns the data so you your query can take you know uh, uh, too much time so you your query can take uh, time as per you know the load on database uh, or you know the type of your query uh, so instead of sitting idle for this time this blocking time can be allocated to some other thread by cpu okay and uh, schedule can context switch to other eligible threads which are available and waiting for execution of a task let's say that if a task spend 50% time blocking then we can uh, have uh, you know another thread which can be created to execute another task okay 
So uh, consider one example. Uh, we have one task which is executed by one thread, and uh, this complete operation is taking two seconds. And uh, this is an I/O operation. Once for one second, uh, it is calling a database to fetch the uh, let's say employee details, and for one second, it is doing some computation and uh, taking CPU time. So we can say that for this one second, for which it is waiting for query result, we can you know schedule one more thread. Which can be executed during this time. Okay, so we can uh, correctly say that if we create two tasks and two threads should execute them, then it will take two seconds only because because when one thread is blocking for uh, a database call, another thread can perform computation on the CPU. Formula for calculating threads uh, that you should use in your I/O application is number of available cores. Divide by one minus blocking coefficient. So this value can be from zero to one. So let's say that uh, if your blocking coefficient is 0.5, then your uh, number of threads would be twice the number of available cores. Next is uh, very simple for the CPU intensive application, uh, which could be you know scientific calculations and uh, mathematical equations. Uh, the number of threads must be equal to number of available cores. Because CPU will not be idle in this case, and uh, thread will not be blocked by some other processes. Uh, but uh, one thing you need to uh, keep in mind is, uh, if you increase the number of C number of threads in CPU intensive applications, uh, it can have negative impact. You know, as uh, CPU might contact switch uh, even the non-blocking thread, okay, which can further delay your application. To sum up, we can say that uh, there are two factors uh, that should be kept in mind to decide the number of threads in a thread pool. First is number of available cores, and uh, second is the type of task, which could be CPU intensive and I/O intensive. And uh, for the type of task, uh, blocking coefficient is uh, the most important thing. For CPU intensive task, blocking coefficient is um, zero, and for I/O intensive, uh, which blocks forever, it could be one. Okay, so ideally for I/O intensive, you should have you know from uh, 0 to 0.99 so this is it guys uh, from this question uh, thanks for watching do subscribe